I wrote this hook this morning that is like a mindset shifting hook. The lyrics in this hook could possibly change your life. So I got to share this hook with you. I got to share it now. I can't wait till it comes out because I don't know when it's going to come out. It's the kind of hook, the kind of song that wouldn't come out until, you know, after the Broncos took a loss or something. And I don't know if that's going to happen this year. As far as I'm concerned, Broncos going 20 and 0 until proven otherwise. But this hook and this mindset shift is something you can benefit from right now. So I want to tell you these words right now. And I really want you to lean in and pay attention to what I'm saying right now, because I'm telling you, it could change your life. Don't don't miss it. Don't miss your blessing right now. Turn off all distractions. I'm going to wait till the car goes by. I want you to really lean in. Listen to what I'm saying to you. It's a gem if you catch it. I said, I don't really lose. I get lessons. You confused. Every lesson learned helped me get to W's. Every lesson learned helped me sharpen up my axe. Now I'm cutting trees down with ease. It's a wrap. I'm going to say it again for the people in the back. I don't really lose. I get lessons. You confused. Every lesson learned helped me get to W's. Every lesson learned helped me sharpen up my axe. Now I'm cutting trees down with ease. It's a wrap. I don't know if you know what them last two lines meant, but I'm going to break them down to you real quick. If you've never heard the story of the two guys that were having this tree cutting competition, this one dude was a young 6'2 strapping diesel dude, right? Been training, dude been on a treadmill, all that, in the gym pumping iron this other dude was like 65 seven years old kind of brolic got that grown man strength but he looked a little tired so they're like yo here's the rules you both got 30 minutes we're gonna start the clock 30 minutes cut down as many trees as you can in 30 minutes so they start young dude just starts getting busy off the rip he like bang, 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 bang. he's relentless he just cutting 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 cut. whole 30 minutes he don't never stop, except for maybe one little moment. He stopped for a moment, and he just looked over at the old dude, and he's like, yo, I've been cutting trees for 10 minutes. This dude ain't even start yet. He over there sitting on the stump. This is a wrap. I'm about to destroy this dude. So he go back to his cutting. Bang, 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 bang. Now the old dude get up. He start cutting. 20 minutes later, they stop the clock. They go to count the trees old dude cut down twice as many trees as the young strapping dude and strapping dude is like fam there's no way this dude cut down more trees than me he spent the first 10 minutes sitting on the stump doing nothing there's no way he had to have cheated and he's like yo bring out the tape or something like i feel like i got robbed so they took out the tape they verified they're like nope he cut down twice as many as you and then afterwards he goes up to the old dude, he's like, oh, how'd you do that, man? How could you have possibly cut down twice as many trees as me when you spent the first 10 minutes not doing nothing? He said, young boy, I wasn't doing nothing. He said, I spent the first 10 minutes sharpening my ax. He said, I was just sharpening my ax. So while you was over there swinging at the same tree 20 times, I was going, bam, 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 three slices, tree down, bam, 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 three slices tree down he said you need to get you some wisdom young boy work smarter not harder now i share that story because one of the things that i feel like sharpens your axe like nothing else in this life is wisdom wisdom knowledge is power you hear people like denzel say fail forward fail often there's so many people so afraid to take L's, they don't try nothing. There's people with gifts and talents that they're not even using because they're afraid of public humiliation. They're afraid they're going to try to put out that clothing line and nobody's going to buy it. And everybody's going to point and laugh and say, oh, how you failed. They're afraid to put out that song because what if it doesn't get a million streams the first week? You know what? Chances are it's not going to get a million streams the first week. Chances are not a lot of people are going to buy that clothing the first time you put it out. But you know what? You're going to get an opportunity to learn. You're going to get feedback. You maybe will realize like, dang, I need to learn how to market now. Now you learn the lesson. Now you have to go learn how to market and apply that. And then when you're trying to learn how to run ads and whatever else, you get to learn. You learn more from failures than you ever will from success. And I know that sounds cliche. Everybody says it. But it's a fact. It's a fact. Everybody says it for a reason. Everybody says it because it's true. Um... There is a reason why people say that to people. 
with that said, I want to share a couple failures where I got to learn and a couple victories where I didn't. First example I can think of, top of my head, is uh, trying to get my music played in the Broncos stadium. I spent years just being mad and complaining. I'm making all this music. Why are they not playing me in the stadium? Seven years in, I finally learned there's a protocol for this. There's a process, right? There's a lot of things preventing you from being in the stadium. Right now, they mostly want to play stuff charting on Billboard. So you got to convince them. And who's them? You got to find out who them is, first of all, that they should give your music a chance. You got to let them know, hey, people are going to respond to this. Trust me, I have data too. It's not going to show up on a Billboard chart, but it's going to show up in this video footage I'm going to send to DJ. I say, look how they responded to this song. It's going to show up when I learned about, oh, wait, I can't say nothing negative about the other team. I didn't know that. That's preventing half of my songs from being played in the stadium. I needed to learn that. The, the, the song has to be at a certain decimal range. It has to peak at a certain place. Otherwise, it's not considered quality enough to be played in the stadium. There's so many steps in this process, so much knowledge I was unaware of. So I'm sitting here just cutting down the tree, cutting down, cutting, cutting, cutting. But I'm not sharpening my axe, which should help me remove those obstacles a lot quicker, right? Another example. This was a win that didn't help me. We had a concert back in Super Bowl 50 season. First week of the season, the party we had for the uh, Louder Road to 50. It's in my documentary, Louder Road to 50. I had this idea. I wanted to throw a concert four or five hours before the concert. I'm like, we're supposed to have a house party, but I want to turn it into a concert, a house party with a live performance, and I want to build a stage. Now, <clears throat> I don't have blueprints for a stage. I don't know how to build a stage. I don't have the wood to build a stage, but I'm like, I want to do it. So I argued with my team a little bit, mostly just keep on, and it worked out. <laughs> you know, it ended up working out. We built a stage. We got somebody to come donate a sound system, let us rock, and um, <clears throat> ended up being a great party. You know what I learned? I learned nothing. I continued to practice that same foolish behavior, thinking that proper preparation is unnecessary. Fast forward some other events I had, and I learned the hard way that proper preparation really does prevent poor performances. Prior planning really does prevent poor performances. But when I got the win, when it worked out for me, I didn't learn anything. You know how many times I knocked on CBS's doors? You know how many times I pitched songs to CBS that they were like, nope, nope, before I ever got a yes. And you know, as an artist, you're sensitive, it's your art. That just crushes you. Sometimes I get a no, I wouldn't even knock for six more months. And I try again, they say no. But I kept knocking and I kept learning. Well, well what's wrong with it? I had to start studying, well, what do they play? on CBS during games. And I started realizing like, mm, these songs have a lot of dynamic range. These songs transition every two bars instead of four because they're shorter songs. These songs they aren't disparaging, they're not biased. I started watching and figuring out how could I get in where I fit in? How could I give them what they need, what they use already? I started sharpening my ax. Fast forward, I've had 70 something songs play on CBS. I've done the intro song for NFL Today to kick off football season. I've done the intro song for Thursday Night Football 30-something times. I've licensed songs with March Madness. I've worked with Nate Burleson and Charles Barkley and the CBS, TNT, TBS crew over there for the March Madness things. Point is, now when I pitch a song to CBS, I'm like 50-50 chance of them saying yeah. Because my axe has been sharpened. You know how I got sharp? Failing rejection getting told no you learn when you lose right when you catch an L you learn so I'm going to tell you this hook one more time as I encourage you to use your gifts get out there start trying get the learning get the failing I don't really lose I get lessons you confused it's different now you get what I'm saying I don't really lose I get lessons you confused Every lesson learned helped me get to W's. Every lesson learned helped me sharpen up my axe. Now I'm cutting trees down with ease. It's a wrap. Get the cutting. Get the learning. Sharpen up your axe. It's going to get easier and easier, man. I promise you.
Don't get discouraged. Don't let fear hold you back. Get the cut.